We have yet to talk about how this cell is actually going to power all of these things. So energy, we mentioned, is in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. So the idea with ATP is that we have some level of cellular energy that's produced, and everything that we have talked about and will talk about with what cells do is powered by ATP. So cellular respiration takes sugars and foods and converts it into ATP. So a cell cannot use an ice cream cone directly to do any of its jobs, but it will take that ice cream cone and convert it into ATP and use ATP to do everything it needs to do. Now to do this, it uses mitochondria. Mitochondria are very, very specialized in their structure and function. They have an intermembrane space, meaning we're going to be dealing with a lot of membrane surface area. This will be important for cell respiration. Be careful when we talk cell respiration, we're not talking just O2, CO2 exchange. Instead, we've got to talk about energy production. Be very careful with that. If you want to talk about O2, CO2 exchange, like when you breathe, that's something known as pulmonary respiration. Pulmonary is lungs. So they are similar, okay? Um, we will look at gas exchange in both, but be careful, don't be using cell respiration interchangeably with what you're actually doing with your lungs, okay? Inside the mitochondrial matrix, matrix is this maze-like of membrane inside the mitochondria, we're going to find mitochondrial DNA. And before you get all upset, yes, this is different than the nuclear DNA we've already talked about. Mitochondrial DNA is very, very specific to the mitochondria. It is actually circular, circular DNA. This will be important for us later to think about. We'll look at ribosomes inside the mitochondria. And we'll look at tons of enzymes. So these are the three things that make up the processing of energy and what's needed for the mitochondria. The mitochondria also have a very interesting design in that they are able to replicate themselves. So they self-replicate. This is extremely important because if you have a cell that is doing large amounts of energy production, these will wear out and they will need to be replaced. The mitochondria are constantly working to replace themselves. So here's that inner membrane I was talking to you about covered in this outer membrane. We get a lot of surface area. This surface area is extremely important for cell respiration and ATP production. And we'll look at that a lot more later on and show you how and why. Chloroplasts in what we call photoautotrophs, more general term for them would be plants, okay? We look at photosynthesis not as an ATP producer. These are not going to produce cellular energy. They are, however, going to take sunlight and convert it into chemical energy. So taking light energy and converting it into chemical energy. The chemical energy that plants are going to convert it into are glucose. So when we look at chloroplasts, they have a very similar structure. They are very energy intense organelles. They just don't make ATP, they make glucose or sugars. So in this intermembrane space, again, it's going to be just like your mitochondria, lots of surface area. 
Inside, what we're going to find are some interesting things known as a stroma, a thylakoid, and a granum. These are all responsible for some part of photosynthesis and the conversion of light energy into chemical. We will get into more of these chloroplast structures later on. Please don't worry about them right now. I just wanted to show you that this structure, this chloroplast, looks very, very similar to the mitochondria we were just talking about. Chloroplasts have their own DNA. And again, they're going to have their own ribosomes. And they're going to self-replicate. So you see the similarities between mitochondria and chloroplasts. They have their own DNA and ribosomes I mentioned to you. And the idea is the structure of the DNA and the structure of the ribosomes found in the mitochondria and the chloroplasts are very similar to that found in bacteria. We do not see mitochondria and chloroplasts in bacteria. They don't have them. The only place we find mitochondria and chloroplasts are in eukaryotic cells. So why would they look like a prokaryote? This is something known as the endosymbiotic theory. Endo is inside. What is symbiotic? We look at it as being mutually beneficial. If you have a symbiotic relationship with someone, your, your relationship is mutually beneficial. This theory proposes that mitochondria and chloroplasts were actually prokaryotes or bacteria at one point and were actually ingested by an early eukaryote and improved the fitness of that eukaryote. And when that occurred, here's a mitochondria, all these little round guys are mitochondria. There's one cut open for you, okay. Um, and when we look at these guys, these are actually E. coli, a very common bacteria. So the theory is that one cell ate another cell, but instead of the lysosomes breaking it down as it normally would, that cell started, if it was an early bacteria, it would have been making its own energy. And now it's making energy inside of a cell. And it's in a protected environment. It's got a lot of food associated with it. This, this cell with this design is going to do significantly better than a cell without it. We will come back to this later and think about it more, what it actually means um, as far as evolution.